rather than continuing on our conversation about fisheries, what I want to talk today is um, about some of the positive things. Now, sometimes, I know you'll find this shocking, sometimes I'm accused of being negative uh, in terms of uh, certain situations with regard to our natural environment and that, that uh, I might leave you with a overly pessimistic vision of what's our state of affairs. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. So certainly we need to be cognizant of the real, very, very serious challenges we face. And we shouldn't sugarcoat things. But at the same time, I think maybe I have a tendency to focus on the challenges and not play up the successes as much as I possibly should. So I want to talk about some things that I think are reasons for um, optimism or reasons for hope that we're that we can do stuff the right way that we do indeed know how to do stuff or, or if we at least put our mind to it we can do stuff the right way so I want to talk about that today but before we start talking about it, I'd like to ask you guys if you anything you've read um, in this class or related classes or whatever what are some what are some hopeful signs or some successes if you will in terms of coastal management that, that you guys know of. Any, any, any positive um, things jump to your mind as, as a nice case study or a nice example or a good lesson? Policy. Policy? So, so just... California policy. So state policy? Like the... Uh, like the California Coastal Act or something maybe? Okay, good. Any other positive thing? And, and that's not to say that everything's perfect about these things, but at least you know it has some positive um, aspects of stuff. Any uh, what else? Uh, when we did our coastal surveys uh, for the beaches and stuff, that's like a big response. Nobody knew anything about the beach, so I'm hoping we uh, keep their curiosity out there learning on their own. Okay, good. So some some of the work that you guys have done is was is maybe hopefully stimulated some people. Uh, to learn more themselves. Okay, good. So, so um, engaging the public. Um, I was doing the same thing with the surveys, but I went out on a day where it was a coastal cleanup day. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, there were so many people, and people. It seems like more and more people every year get involved in doing coastal cleanup. All right, cool. So, California coastal cleanup is a good thing. It might be in a sense, I mean, it is clearly cleaning up beaches. It might be somewhat symbolic in the sense that we're not out there every day and more trash might roll down. But the fact that people are out there trying to make a difference and being engaged is a great thing, is a really cool thing. What else? Uh, yeah, I agree. And so I think, I think um, it's, Im it's important to, I mean, there are clearly bad actors in any field we might go into. They're, they're jerks, they're our liars, they're filthy people and all that kind of stuff. But most people aren't necessarily that way, right? Even, even the quote unquote bad actors or the, the, the quote unquote bad industries or, or whoever it is that you know, might be stereotyped as messed up. If you sit down and have a beer with someone, or whatever, a coffee, I'm not implying you should have alcohol, I guess. <laughs> but you know I mean? If you sit down and actually talk to someone, you'll actually find that we're not as different. And it's really, really easy to demonize someone when you don't talk to them, right? And so I think one of the things we try to do in our program is we try to get you guys talking to folks. And again, not, we're not always gonna agree on everything, but those are people too, right? And there, are, again, there are gonna be the jerky folks out there, but most folks, really, I think we want the same things. We might disagree about the priority of how much time or money or resource we should put towards something, but rarely would people say, I want polluted air, <laughs> or I want no fish in the ocean, right? And it's, it's that, 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 that's important to realize, because sometimes some of the rhetoric we get in certain, certain media and certain, certain contexts, it's very easy to paint um, a side that doesn't think like you think as stupid or ignorant or, or always self-serving or something of that nature. So that's good. Okay, good. What else? Uh, just the whole notion of kind of what we learned about down in San Diego. So like the blue economy and um, mm -hmm. all this new technology. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, to advance our own knowledge of, you know, the ocean 
we are definitely in this uh, something of a golden age of, of oceanic technology and of the potential to make a living through, you know, on and near the coast and to do that sustainably. That, that's, that's, that's an exciting time in, in the context of those uh, aspects of our coast. What else? Yeah, so we do have a lot. So again, sometimes it's sort of like it's sort of like uh, what you're getting, f what you got from some of our public opinion poll surveys, which is, you know, if we sort of ask in general, people say, "Oh, the ocean is screwed," or "Oh, coastal management is poor." Or, you know stuff like that but if you actually start to ask specific things like those reading like all the different examples we were we had and uh, you guys read about over the course of the semester those things aren't necessarily bad right those things the, the, those policies I mean again we might want to tweak them or make them better but it's it's generally when we get down to the weeds people are like yeah that's okay right that, 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 that's not a horrible thing that that, that wasn't that was an okay thing so yeah that's good anything else jump into my jump to mine Okay, all right, cool. Well, let's let's look at um, some examples. And I just grabbed a, I try to grab a bunch of um, unrelated, just different things, to um, to just uh, touch on positive things. So the first here is something that uh, a classic. This is a classic thing academics do all the time, right? It's very easy to do now. It used to be hard. It used to, when I was your age, it was very hard to do. Um, now it's really easy, um, which is to go to one of our databases, Biosis, Biological Abstracts, whatever your, your favorite uh, web of science, whatever your favorite search uh, tool is, and type in phrases. So in this case, I've typed in, typed in shark finning, um, ocean acidification, overfishing, MPAs. This is a couple years old, but it serves to make the point. And it says, and so I, I um, what you basically do is you, um, to create some kind of standard, you say, oh, I'm going to pick these, let's say, 15 most popular journals that publish marine related scholarship, let's say, coastal and marine related scholarship. And I'm just going to sum up how many papers there were published each year. And then I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to type in these keywords. And so again, that might be in the title of the paper, it might be in the abstract, it might be in the keywords, whatever. And these are how many hits we get. And so, um, and as a proportion of the total uh, uh, articles published, and what you see is um, things like uh, shark finning are going up, right? Meaning there's there's an increasing interest. Overfishing has stayed about the same. Ocean acidification, a, a big spike in the mid uh, 2000s. And marine protected areas has pretty much been on a, a pretty consistent trajectory since the early 1990s. So um, I would say that's generally viewed as a positive thing, that these topics that we've, we've at least touched on in this class, if not discussed more, more intently, um, it means more and more people seem to recognize these things as at least something worthy of study. That doesn't mean we've solved the problem, doesn't mean we know everything about it, but it, it suggests that um, more and more people are putting more intellectual uh, energy into addressing these issues, which is, which is a positive thing, right? The more people thinking and, and, and tackling these problems, that's a good thing. We're more likely to figure out how to uh, ways out of the morass of the problem. Uh, another super fun one that you guys can try is anybody play with n-gram? So a, a fun one you guys should, should just mess with when you have uh, a couple minutes is just search. Here, I'll show you. So if you just type in n-gram, it's the Google n-gram viewer. So we could do this ourselves. So what this is, is Google has been digitizing libraries around the world for the last uh, 10, 15 years or so. And they now have a big database of books. I believe it only goes to 2008. You, you, if you try to force the year to be 2015, it, it, won't, it won't do that. It'll only go um, 
you know, it's a couple of years back from now. But what it'll do is it's scanning all kinds of stuff. It's scanning romance novels, uh, uh, history books, uh, you know, newspapers, all kinds of stuff. And so um, what you can do is you can type in a word or a phrase. If you type in more than one word, you want to separate it uh, or, or the phrase by a comma. And then you have our default, um, uh, our default time range. So I'll just show you how this works. Um, now, this is not what I did for that graph. Th this is not using a database that's only scholarly articles. This is just looking at everything. So for example, if I, if we, so tell me some things you guys want to know about the popularity. Fishing, okay. What else? Channel Islands. What else? Marine debris. Actually, let's, let's say that. Let's do that we'll do this one first and then we'll come back to that. So I type in a couple, a word or a couple phrases and then it, there's a time range and the default will be from 1800 to 2000. And then I want to say case insensitive. And so that's going to make, that's going to give me fishing lowercase f or fishing capital F fishing. And, and it's, you know, all the possibilities with Channel Islands, same way, right? So we say do that. And here's the answer. So what's, what's the uh, y-axis? Who knows? It's like a gazillion, because of, of all the words in this massive, insanely gazillion, gigantor, uh, a database thing, right? So it, the actual amount doesn't really matter. It's a proportional thing. It's a relative thing. And so this is a tool to look at trends, trends in the use of terms. So what we see is fishing looks pretty, um, pretty similar. Channel Islands had a pop in about 1860, 1870. That's probably referring to the Channel Islands off of, you know, as part of, that are part of the UK, but still, um, you can do that. So, so, so let, let's look at another one. So we had marine debris. And le then let's look at some other things. Trash, garbage, uh, uh, microplastic. What else? Garbage. Garbage patch. Anything else? Let's make this more like 2008. Okay, and so we say boom. So here we go. So trash was was fair as was pretty much holding consistent. Oh, and I should say, if you guys really want, if you like this, you can embed this chart. And then if you really want this the raw data, you can download the raw data into your own graphing program if you wanted to do something fancy with it. But but anyway, so here we go. So trash is pretty stable until about the 1960s. And after the 1960s, it whoop, it went, it got crazy popular. Garbage, similar, although the garbage spike started more like in the late 1800s and really seemed to spike in the 19 in World War um, World War One type period, and then it crashed back down, and uh, and so this is probably being replaced by another term. So terms might come into popularity. Um, and then what was the other one we had? Leah, nobody cares about garbage. A garbage patch, no garbage patch, and then a little teeny blip. So let's look at, uh, let's get rid of garbage and trash and redo that. Okay, there you go. So now, so, so now, now our scale has changed, right? It was getting a little bit confounded by the so many references to trash. And so what we see here is uh, nobody was talking about marine debris really up until um, really, I mean, there's a little blurb down here, but really it was 1980 and then it went totally crazy. And then it seems to have fallen out of favor, um, with some other terms probably taking over popularity, um, uh, uh, ocean garbage or, or, you know, who knows what the other alternative terms are. Um, and microplastics really took off in the sixties and have been on the decline in recent decades compared to uh, in the past. Um, and then again, garbage patch was pretty much nowhere until 2000 and now it's been taken off since 2000. So, th so this, is a, uh, uh, this is a good, you know, the relatives are over for the holidays and you're trying to, you know, <laughs> d 
to get something going. And uh, this is a really fun thing to, again, there are limits here, right? It's, it's not looking at every single book and all the entirety of human language and everything. But at least it gives you some sense of, of stuff, right? You can do things like, right? And, and, and th that kind of stuff. So, so um, an, an interesting tool to look at trends, at least in terms of our language and how we approach things. Take a look at sustainability. Sustainability. Oh, misspelled it. Sustainability. <laughs> there you go. Sustainability has been sort of flat, but sustainability and sustainability uh, boosting up since 1980. And you might you might look at that as uh, right. So as environmentalism tapers off, sustainability takes its place. 